In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, thanks to Allah, and may Allah bestow his peace and blessings on our Prophet and blessings upon his pure and truthful kin. And we thank Allah to have this opportunity to discuss what has occurred in al rauda al sharifa because it reminds us of the great sides of the biography of Al-Mustafa, peace be upon him, and the glorious sides to take from it, to live with the sweet memories inside this al rauda which was witnessed by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that it is a piece of heaven. And when we see these events, we remember a specific important issue, that is the Prophet, peace be upon him, after he built this mosque and prayed with Muslims in it. We notice that after he came back from Khaybar battle, the number of Muslims had increased and the mosque became too small. And there was a garden beside the mosque. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, wanted to expand the mosque. So Uthman bin Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, bought this place. And he built it with cement. And this is from his biography. Uthman, the Caliph of Muslims, and a truthful companion, and a son-in-law of Adul al-Nurayn, may Allah be pleased with him. And we noticed here that the Prophet, peace be upon him, built the first phase, and then it expanded. And like this in every phase of these phases, he made sure not to take anyone's money or rights forcefully. And Uthman, though al Norain, was trying to take this opportunity in more than one occasion. And that was the first occasion that this garden was offered. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, wanted to expand the mosque with it. And after he came back from Khaybar battle and the number of prayers had increased, the size of the mosque wouldn't fit them anymore. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, expanded it. But what also notifies us is an important side that this issue shows us, that the inside of this mosque slept a strange man. If a person came and did not have a place to sleep in, the poor and the weak used to eat there, and the poor people, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was generous with them. And he used to sit and talk to them and teach them the rules. And it was a place for arbitration in this great place. And the conversations were happening there and the battles were organized. All of them came from this place. So as we come closer to the Rauda Asharifa, we feel at these moments that we learned from what had happened in this mosque. How was this Rauda? And how was this mosque? When we enter it to pray, how the Prophet, peace be upon him, made it a base of operations and did not make it, peace be upon him, a place for prayer only, or to fast in, or to break the fast in. And he also allowed them in al Rauda to express happiness when an occasion comes. They exchange congratulation and joy. And we notice that the Prophet, peace be upon him, cared about Muslims' happiness and not to pressure them and the children's joy. And he always cared about the young. And in this place, he used to teach them but he was very careful, peace be upon him, that inside the Prophet's mosque, in this spot, to take care of Hassan bin Thabit, 
when he presented poems in this place, and he did not feel shy to represent this. Beautiful poems, what made the Prophet, peace be upon him, happy inside the mosque. Meaning, there was no embarrassment in this subject, but he, peace be upon him, in this mosque, listened to people's words that they spoke, or problems, and sometimes he used to feel happy when some foreigners, such as Al-Habash, came to him. When they came and wanted to express their joy, and they sang some anthems in the mosque, he did not stop them. He was happy, because he wanted to make things easier, peace be upon him. And, and when Hassan bin Thabit sang the anthems, the Prophet used to say, Allah supports him. Allah supports him with the Holy Spirit, meaning an invitation to him of what was this man. And the other great poets, like Abdullah ibn Raha, God be pleased with them all. They are information image and the information power, which was express and defend Muslims. Because there was no notification, no television, no radio in those times. And the beautiful poetry and was recited to one another. Defends Islam. Defends the Quran. Defends the Prophet, peace be upon him. Defends the Prophet's companions. So what was happening in the Rauda and the Prophet's peace be upon him, did not get angry at them. He was happy. Great happiness with the things that you say. Although in Rauda, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And in Rauda we learn something great, which is that when the Quran was revealed to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, did not reveal all at once, but in different occasions. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to teach it to the companions in this Rauda. So he depended on the hearts of the memorizers. Because man used to memorize it from the very beginning. And he never forgets. And they did not have anything to distract them. So the Quran has been kept in the hearts of those companions. Exactly how they were taught by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And with the way they were taught from the Messenger, peace be upon him. In Al Rauda. And from here, the Quran was kept in the hearts of the companions, and they had great abilities memorizing. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered them to write the Quran during his life. He relied on a group of his companions to read the Quran and to write it. They wrote the Quran in the era of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But how? They wrote it on animal skin, meaning on skin some of it. They wrote it on bones. They wrote it on stones. They wrote it on different things, keeping the Quran with them. But the basic keeping was in their hearts, because the original depended on people's memorization and their ability to memorize. And these things remained with them for many years even after the first and second centuries. Many people remained with the power of memorization. And even now in some places, the tribes in Arab countries and in Africa, they still have a great power to memorize. But for the Prophet's companions, peace be upon him. And for what happened in al Rauda Sharifa, we witness all the text shows that the Qur'an were kept by the companions the way the Prophet taught them. And Allah the Almighty kept this holy book 
because he promised to. Verily, it is we who have sent down the Qur'an, and surely we will guard it. Therefore, keeping the Qur'an, while the companions were learning the Qur'an, and learning it with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and teaches them the Qur'an, and memorizing the Qur'an. And as we said, the Qur'an was written by the command of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on different parts, from the different shapes that were written and memorized. That shows us that the Qur'an in the Rauda Sharifa, when it was being revealed by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was teaching it to the companions, may Allah bless them all, and was commanding of writing it as a second stage. And the Qur'an was revealed to the Holy Prophet in two stages, all at once from the well-kept board, from the heavens, then revealed from the heavens separately, separated by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, based on the different events and actions that had happened. Here, the Qur'an was revealed to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. He used to gather them and tell them. And then comes on occasions to reveal a Quranic verse from the Holy Quran, like the occasions when the Prophet waited for a specific occurrence, peace be upon him. He expected the revelation to guide him to certain occurrence. All of that happened in most of the times in the Rauda, al Rauda al Sharifa. But in certain occasions, the Quranic verses were revealed in more than one place. But here in the Honorable Prophetic al rauda al sharifa the Prophet taught the companions the Qur'an, and they memorized the Qur'an by heart. And they kept their memorization. And these things which we said, that the Qur'an was written this way, as in a keeping of it. Of course, we always remember that the Qur'an was first revealed to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, in Hira Cave, when the first Qur'anic verse, and the first of the verses, was Surat Al-Alaq, and its first verse, and the revelation, to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the order recite came to him. And he replied, peace be upon him, you are ahead of my parents, I am not a reader. And he repeated, recite, recite, I am not a reader. And then recite until he said, read in the name of thy Lord, who has created, who has created man from a clot. Here we know that this is the first Quranic verse that had been revealed. But in certain times, some discussions, the experts must not talk about it. But the common people must take it the way it is. That this Quran was revealed to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, separately and according to events, and about the first surah that was revealed, Al-Alaq, and the first verse that was revealed, which is, recite, and the first surah, Al-Alaq. The religious experts see that that was the night when the Holy Quran was revealed, which was the night of power. But that does not mean to reconcile between this and that. This is one of the things that the common people must not be distracted by, but to let it to the religious experts to explain consequences to this case. And the important thing is to know that this Quran remained from the era of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, until today, the harm does not come to it. And thanks to Allah, it did not change and was not changed. And no one dared to make any changes to it. Because Allah promised to keep it safe. Verily, we, it is we who have sent down the Quran and surely we will guard it. And Allah the Almighty promised to keep it safe. The priests depended in the previous holy books that they kept their holy books, so the changing and exchanging happened. Therefore, we do not find any book. They can say that this is the book that had been revealed, or this 
is what Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, wrote, or this is what had been revealed to Prophet Jesus, because much of the books between their hands are books that were written after that, and in so many languages, and with so many changes, and with so many texts. But the Qur'an is still as how Allah the Almighty revealed it. Verily, we, it is we who have sent down the Qur'an, and surely we will guard it, because Allah the Almighty promised to keep the Qur'an safe. So when the Qur'an was revealed in al rauda in the days that the Prophet, peace be upon him, lived in, the Qur'an was completed. He was teaching the companions, peace be upon him, and all the companions were memorizing. And there were some of the revelation writers who were better than others. And some of the Qur'an writers who were better. And on the top were the four caliphs, may Allah be pleased with them. All these things show us that when we live these sides of al rauda we remember here the Prophet, peace be upon him. Here he gathered with his companions, peace be upon him. Here he taught people this great religion. Here the Qur'an was revealed to him. Here we enter and we recognize the meaning of entering to the Prophet's mosque, peace be upon him. And we learn the required morals. And first, to be polite in the mosque and to be pure and to contemplate and the remembering and then to continue praying on the Prophet, peace be upon him. Because these things, an important thing that teaches us, what does it mean to talk and speak about the gracefulness of al Rauda Sharifa that we shed light upon? on the great occurrence that happened in the Rauda Sharifa. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, between his companions, teaches them and arranges for them and organizes for them. And he feeds the poor and he warns the mistaken. All that happened in al Rauda. In this discussion about the gracefulness of al Rauda, here we feel that we are coming closer to what had happened in al Rauda al Sharifa, which the Prophet, peace be upon him, spoke about that it is a garden from Paradise Gardens. There is a garden from the gardens of Paradise between my house and my pulpit, meaning when we enter al Rauda, we are happy that Allah gave us the honor to pray in it and to read the Qur'an in it. All these things that Allah gave us the honor to be near to al Rauda al sharifa We must take care of it and to be generous to the people who visit it and to help whoever wants to pray in it and not to save places and to forbid others. On the contrary, to be happy with their arrival and to allow them and give them the opportunity to pray. Because it's a blessing to be in the Rauda and a joy to be in the Rauda and not on the consideration of those brothers who come from far lands wanting to stay in al Rauda even for minutes or to pray in it. And it's not right to stay for hours, to stay in my place and forbid those. No! out of preference, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught the companions how to treat each other in the Rauda, how to love each other, how to embark on each other. Here, here, when we enjoy the gracefulness of al Rauda, we remember what does it mean to be in the honorable prophetic al Rauda Sharifa. And in our next episodes, we will shed light upon what had happened in al Rauda al Sharifa. And may we ask Allah to accept from us and to give us the honor of visiting the Prophet's mosque and to pray in al Rauda. And may Allah bestow His peace on our Holy Prophet.
May Allah bestow his blessings and peace upon the Holy Prophet and peace be upon you.